Hey, my name is Thomas and today I want to show you how to operate a manual focus lens. There are basically two things <laughs> you have to take into consideration when operating any lens and that's your focus and your aperture. And I'm going to show you how. There's a lot of markings on the lens um, for the aperture for the uh, distance and then also a depth of field scale and yeah, let's just see how it works. Most manual focus lenses, they do not have any electric contacts. So here are the communication contacts on your camera, but the lens doesn't have them because it's manual. So you have to deal with everything using these rings here. So aperture is very obvious. You go, you just operate the aperture. Um, keep in mind that this also affects the depth of field. So an open aperture will have a very shallow depth of field. But you see all this uh, when you look through the viewfinder or onto the screen as well. So uh, when you adjust your focus, you will also be, you know, just looking through the viewfinder and then uh, turn the ring until you see the image is sharp. However, there are also a lot of markings here. So this marking is infinity. Now keep in mind, it's not hyper exact. There is a little line under the marking. So somewhere in there, in this range, there will be true infinity for far away subjects. And then you can basically go down to your close focus and you see all these distances engraved here or printed on. These distances refer to the distance from your subject somewhere there to the sensor plane. And most cameras have this little sign here. So when it says, for example, 37 centimeters, that means you go from this sensor plane 37 centimeters and somewhere here will be your subject when you use this setting. That's the point of these markings on the focusing ring. Now, let's turn to the concept of zone focusing. What does that mean? This means sometimes you want to be quick, you do some street photography or stuff like that, and you don't have the time to manually focus before you take the shot. So what you do is you just guess the distance. And that's why there are all these markings on it. For example, you say, I think my subject is going to be around two meters away. So you put this on two. Uh, the thing is, you now don't want to focus, uh, take the shot at open aperture because for that you really have to be super precise. It's, it's no use to just say it will be more or less two meters. Um, so to get a sharp shot, close the lens to f8 or even to f11. And then, you know, my street subject is going to be around two meters or three meters. So three is somewhere in between two and infinity, maybe this will be three meters. Um, four meters is, by the way, exactly halfway between two and infinity. That's how these scales work. It's a logarithmic scale. So also you see one meter is twice the distance from infinity than two meters. So four will be here, eight will be somewhere here, like that. And um, you put this on f11, two meters, and your subject, if it's more or less two meters, maybe two and a half or one and a half meters, it still doesn't matter. You will always get a sharp shot. You do not need to focus at all before the shot. That's the idea of zone focusing. To aid you doing that, there's also this depth of field scale printed on the lens. And um, it shows you, let's say you put it on two meters and you select F11. It tells you that basically everything that's a little bit further away than one meter to almost infinity will be now in focus. Or what you can also do is you put the infinity mark on the 11 and then it tells you that at f11 everything from infinity and then yeah, to maybe one and a half meters or something is in focus. Without you focusing at all, it will be just automatically in focus. That's the idea of that scale.
Now there is one catch with this scale. These, these scales were printed on lenses since, I don't know, a hundred years maybe. And they have a pretty, you know, they're not for very precise focusing. In the old days, if you took a shot with your camera, you would be glad if you would be able to get a like 13 by 18 centimeters print from it, or yeah, six by nine inches or something. That was already a big print. Today, you're looking at your shots on your, I don't know, 55 or 65 inch TV. So the uh, resolution that you anticipate is much higher. In the old days, something would still look in focus on your small print that in reality wasn't perfectly in focus. So my personal advice is if you really are using these scales on a modern camera and you really want like crisp 100% crop sharpness, then um, maybe you should sort of go three apertures down. So for example, you set your lens to f8 and three apertures down is like 5.64, 2.8, you really should, <laughs> you should rather use the 2.8 mark instead of the f8 mark. And as you see, that means a lot less is in focus. And if you go to like f11, uh, then three apertures down is like 5.64, so you use the f4 mark and you still see, you've got some latitude here, but it's more like from infinity to maybe three meters, that's really in focus. If you just intend to use it like in the old days and you're happy if it looks fine on a print that's uh, four by six inches, then you can use the scale as it is. But yeah, today you will look on your photos on a big screen. Another example, this church. I reckon I'm maybe around 20 meters away, so that's sort of almost infinity-ish. <laughs> so I just put it on, you know, a tad before infinity. And again, I'm just on F8 to play it safe. I'll take the shot and it will be in focus. Now keep in mind, I'm playing safe, that's why I'm saying F8. Um, if you get more experience using this method, you maybe can use it at F5.6 as well, or even F4. It also depends on how long the focal length of your lens is. With a telephoto lens, you have to be much more precise, guessing the right distance, and in the end you will just use the viewfinder and focus through the viewfinder. But if you're using a standard or wide-angle lens, this, this scale focusing can really work for you. It makes your photography much, much faster. <laughs> and that's it already for today. I mean, there's not that much to cover, but now you should know what all these weird markings on your manual focus lens really mean, and you know how to operate it. I hope you will have fun trying it out. If you've got any questions or comments, just uh, write something in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments, as you know, and I will answer every single one of them, or also all your questions that you should have. Um, yeah, otherwise, all I can say is thank you for watching, leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and hit the small bell button for the notification for my next video. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.